a uh, basic review on stability. For stability, uh, so ability to return our vessel upright. Uh, if we don't maintain stability, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, here I got pictures of what happens after flooding. You get hold or improper loading, things like that, uh, including even icing, too much topside weight. Let's get right to it, right to the review. Remember, uh, center of gravity is a ge geometric center, geographic center on our vessel. Uh, around which all weights are centered. So we calculate the weight of the vessel, uh, the weight of the cargo, weight of all the equipment, our liquid load, fuel, water, uh, anything else on board, we weigh it. And if, from its locations, we can calculate where the center of gravity is. And uh, in calculations, we label it as G, capital letter G, and it's the center through where all the weights are pushing down and they're pushing down towards the center of the earth. Essentially, earth is pulling all those weights towards the center, but that's where it's acting through, acting through the center of gravity of our vessel. See, the center of gravity should stay where it is. If everything is stowed where it's supposed to be, if everything's lashed down, uh, uh, equipments and lockers, um, our tanks are full, everything's where it's supposed to be our center of gravity will stay where it is. It should not move. But if we add weight, center of gravity moves in the direction that we add weight. So we add weight down low, center of gravity moves down. Add weight up high, center of gravity moves up. Conversely, center of gravity moves away from weight that we take away. In other words, we burn up all our fuel, use up all our water, that was weight that was down low as it empties out, as it goes away, center of gravity goes up. If we got rid of all our topside weight, center of gravity would go down. It moves away from weight that we remove. It moves towards weight that we add. If we shift weight, then of course it moves in the direction that we shift our weight. Counteracting that is our center of buoyancy. Uh, object sinks down into fluid, buoyed up by a force equal to the weight it's displacing. Uh, we call this buoyancy and uh, it's pushing upwards, uh, keeping our vessel afloat. Our center of buoyancy is different than our center of gravity is constantly moving. It will always seek the geographic center of the underwater portion of our hull. So as our vessel heals and tilts over, center of buoyancy constantly moves back and forth trying to stay uh, in, the, in the geographic center of whatever shape uh, is underwater. And it tries to track that down. At rest, our center of gravity is directly over the center of buoyancy. Here, really, it's our center of buoyancy is directly underneath our center of gravity, counteracting each other. And if we're loaded correctly, uh, designed correctly, uh, everything is working against each other. Uh, we're sitting nice and level. We set our coffee cup on the table. Nothing moves, doesn't go anywhere. Everything is fine. But now let's take a look at what happens when we lean things over. So center of gravity pushing down, center of buoyancy pushing up. If we draw a vertical line from our center of buoyancy and then induce an angle of heel, and draw a new center of buoyancy where it now shifts to its new location, trying to stay in the geographic center of the underwater portion of our hull. If we draw a vertic new vertical line where those lines cross, we label that M and we call it the metacenter. Metacenter is an imaginary point where both lines from the center of buoyancy pass through and our relationship between our center of gravity and the metacenter is our whole stability problem. It tells us whether we're positive stability, negative stability, or neutral stability. So that distance and the difference between, uh, oops, excuse me, uh, between G and M, center of gravity and our metacenter, we label that metacentric height. It's the height, and we measure it in feet, the height between center of gravity and our metacenter. 
kind of continuing on with that, if we draw a horizontal line from our center of gravity across to that vertical line from our center of buoyancy, well, here we go, before we get to that. As long as our center of gravity is below M, and of course it's still pushing down, our center of buoyancy is in a new location pushing up. Center of gravity is pushing down where it is. Center of gravity is pushing up where it is. We have what we call a riding moment. And the riding moment is a force that tends to turn us back upright. Center of buoyancy is pushing up over there. Center of gravity pushing down over here. It's going to turn us back upright where we want to be. Even if we say we raise our center of gravity, as long as it's below M, it's still pushing down over here. Center of gravity is still pushing up over here, and we will still have a riding moment returning us back upright. However, if our center of gravity goes up to our meta center, now we've reached a new equilibrium. It's pushing down, buoyancy is pushing up, and we have no force that's going to return our vessel back upright. It just stays where it is. We call this neutral stability or a neutral moment. No tendency to return us back to where we want it to be. If our center of gravity goes up above the matter center. Now we have our bad situation. Center of gravity is pushing down over here. Center of buoyancy is pushing up over here. And we have an upsetting moment rather than a riding moment. And it's going to capsize us. It's going to turn us over. So when our center of gravity is above the meta center, that's our problem. That's going to be negative stability. That's going to give us an upsetting moment, uh, flipping us over, turning us upside down. OK, here's our riding arm. Back to our diagram. If we draw a horizontal line from our center of gravity across to that new vertical line from the center of buoyancy, uh, we label the point where it intersects G, GZ, the a line between G and Z, is our riding arm. Think of that as a lever that gives us our power. That lever gives us our power to return our vessel back upright. The lower our center of gravity, the longer the riding arm. But if we raise our center of gravity, you can see if I draw a new riding arm, because, our, because those points are converging, the higher my center of gravity, the narrower it gets, and the shorter my riding arm gets, gets to be a little narrow lever. So my riding arm gets shorter. I don't have nearly the power to return my vessel upright. I still have positive stability. It's still where I want it. It's still below the meta center, but it doesn't give me the same power on my leverage to return me back upright. Three states of stability, positive, neutral, and negative, and we've talked about it. As long as my center of gravity is below M, I have positive stability. My vessel will return upright. When G is at the same point as M, I have there now I have a new equilibrium. Nothing is going to return me back upright. G is above M, like we just looked at. Then I have negative stability. Now it's upsetting moment, uh, returning me over. <clears throat> we use GM as a measure of stability only up to about seven degrees angle of um, of heel. After that, we need to use uh, stability curves, but that becomes more advanced. Um, and we don't do that in this class. Uh, uh, so right now we're basically just understanding those principles of center of gravity, center of buoyancy, meta center, riding arm, and metacentric height. The effects of weight shifts. Uh, weight, uh, we already talked about, the center of gravity is gonna shift in the same direction as our uh, wherever we shift weight, center of gravity moves in that direction. For now, that's all we're going to stick with. Talked about free surface in class the other day. Free surface is when we have partially filled tanks. And let me just jump ahead to the slide here. Uh, showing three different possibilities. We have a partially full tank or we have pocketing where we have either only a little bit of fluid down the bottom of the tank or only a little bit of air at the top of the tank. 
Uh, in either one of those cases, there's pocketing. We don't have much free surface effect. We're concerned about free surface effect when we have a partially full tank where we could have fluid and it could even be grains or some kind of material that shifts um, where it slides from one side of the compartment or sloshes from one side of the compartment to the other. We're taking a slice of weight from one side, moving up to the other side. And what happens to the center of uh, gravity? Center of gravity moves from where it was to where we shift the new weight. And uh, that's what happens when we have free surface effect. This diagram is a little bit complicated, uh, but it kind of gives you an idea. In this case, we still have possibility positive stability, uh, but it's showing you how it, uh, how it affects it. So on the, uh, we'll say we're looking from aft, so that's the port side of our vessel. Let's say we have a fuel tank on our port side, it's partially fuel, partially full. And so we get a couple of degrees angle of heel, we exaggerate it in this case, but now fuel shifts from a slice that we've labeled G1, small letter G1, it shifts over to the other side of the tank and we're calling where the new location G2. So center of gravity in that tank moved from outboard port more towards the center line, but it moved to starboard uh, for the distance that that fuel shifted over. And it, and uh, if we were level, not only did it move over to starboard, but it also moved vertically. And so our total center of gravity, which was maybe still along the center line, also moves to starboard and also shifts upward just a little bit. So we can see where our initial center of gravity for a vessel was capital letter G. Uh, now it shifts to a new location, G2 to correspond with the shift that the tank, the fluid in that tank moved. It moved over so far. So our center of gravity in our vessel also moved over so far. It's still pushing down where we want it to. Center of buoyancy is still pushing up where we want it to. But now that new location G2 has the same effect as if G actually slid up to a position of G3. It has the same effect if it was actually that high even though in truth, it's only down at the point of G2. That's kind of what they're showing. The danger of free surface effect would be if that fluid shifted all the way to the other side of buoyancy, where now it's pushing down over here. And, that, and car ferries are particularly worried about that because they have an open car deck all the way from port to starboard. If they got four inches of water, six inches of water on the car deck, uh, six inches of water spread over, you know, 400 feet long by 80 feet wide, that is going to be uh, tens of tons, maybe dozens of tons of seawater that all, all of a sudden shifts 80 feet from one side to the other. And it could be catastrophic. In fact, it has been historically been catastrophic to car, car ferries. There have been some big disasters. Um, our committee's principle, once again, object floating on a submerged fluid buoyed up by a force equal to the weight displaced. Um, this is starting just a kind of introduction, starting to get into displacement curves. We're not going to learn about those, but uh, different uh, uh, different draft uh, levels uh, change different displacement curves. I'm just showing this up to kind of uh, have a review on everything from the water line down. It's called draft again. Everything from the water line up to the top of the hull is called freeboard. Um, yeah. There we go. That's a, everything below the water line is draft. Everything above water line is called freeboard. And uh, our freeboard is what they call the, the biggest, best indication of reserve buoyancy. As long as we have watertight spaces above the water line, we have buoyancy that uh, is gonna keep us afloat until we eventually lose it because of flooding or something else. Stability curves, won't get into it. Effective draft, um, proving stability. Um, I'm just gonna throw out uh, just some basic 
uh, principles of stability, which we talked about the other night. And then I'm just, that's gonna close this lesson. Uh, basic principles of stability is load properly. You'll never load more than your stability letter uh, authorizes you. Never load below uh, maximum draft marks. Um, keep tanks either full or empty. Uh, try to draw off of one, uh, only one tank at a time if you can. Uh, smaller vessels, lots of times it's just not possible. Um, but keep it as a principle in mind. Um, watch out for icing. Get rid of topside weight. Monitor uh, your roll period. And if you start to get a sluggish roll, um, then figure out what you can do about it. If you have to load down, if you have to pull into port, take on fuel, take on water, uh, something to try to improve your stability. Made major principles of damage control or heavy weather are keep the water out of your vessel. Make sure all your doors and ports and, and uh, hatches, everything are dogged down, shut, and you're keeping water on the outside. Uh, that's going to be one of the biggest things. So just gonna check. I think that's pretty much it. Get rid of ice uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, keep it off the deck. So those are basic principles of stability. In class, when we get back to class, I'll review the calculation that you learned before, and we'll do a practice problem or two just to make sure you remember that. Uh, so that is it.